All right, welcome everyone. The plan today is to talk about how to store phones on the boat. Yeah, so uh, you know, we were talking about it earlier. It's kind of hard now. You look at society today. You know, we are we're we're pretty tied to our phones. You know, you you get up the first thing you do, you check your phone. Your phone's Sadly. probably what wakes you up in the morning. You know, you get on, you check social media. I think there's a lot of advantages to have that technology to hands reach, especially on the water. And that's what we're going to get into today is kind of talking through different ways to store, hold your boat, or pardon me, hold your phone while you're on your boat. Mm -hmm. um, so Andrew, if you want to kick it off here with uh, the sure. first phone holder we have. All right. So we got, like you can see, a bunch of different products in front of you. We're going to run through them and talk about pros and cons. The first one here is uh, a standard part that we build. It's actually made out of acrylic. Um, and you can see that on the back we have uh, some suction cups. And what we're going to first do is go through all the different models that are uh, removable and, and kind of portable where you can really put them anywhere on the boat. So this is the first one here. It mounts with suction cups. And you can see it's high polished acrylic. It has a notch here for uh, you know, access to the uh, plug on, on most common smartphones and a bungee that goes across the front. And as you can see here, you just pull the bungee, you slide it right in, you know, it's a very simple design. Um, and that design is a design that we've used for, for boat builders, uh, incorporating on the dash. One of our other videos we did last week kind dash of panels. showed that yep. design for dash panels. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a, an aftermarket or an afterthought add-on that we've, we've brought to, to make it removable as well. Sure, so when we're doing dash panels, um, generally all we're mounting is this landing piece, right? If, let's see if I can put it in a way. This landing piece right here, and that's just glued right to the dash. So yep. you have a place to you know, set, your bone, or set your phone, and you've got the bungee, right? So you've got the bungee, and you've got this landing piece. Well, assuming your dash doesn't have that built in, this is a way where we can supply you know, the entire back, the landing piece, you know, and ha have it on suction cups. Later, we'll show you different ways where you can actually hard mount it, you know, with screws or with studs. Uh, but this is a real simple way to hold your phone. Um, I think the going price is about uh, forty dollars. I'll check the website here real quick. Yep, thirty-eight, thirty-seven. Uh, we are gonna list prices as we talk through these. Quick disclaimer that you know the prices are subject to change, and if you're looking at this two years down the road, it's expected the prices will be up a little bit from where they are now. But um, it'll give you a really good idea for relative price. You know, this is a roughly forty-dollar part. Yeah, there's a lot of cost in material. We did a, a, a little bit of testing before going live with this, uh, adding the suction cups. You know, very basic suction cups. We actually sell replacements should anything happen down the line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we I, I think we ended up hanging nine pounds off of this and you know About put, a week, putting right? it on the window for a week to try to make sure that it's something that you're putting a phone that costs a thousand dollars nowadays. Sure. I think the new, new iPhones like nine hundred dollars. You know, you want to make sure that it's in there the right way. So, you know, we did that. Cool. So you want to talk about the next one? Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that's that's similar, right? It's it's a removable option for holding your phone. You can see down here at the bottom, it does have this removable mount that holds the phone, and this actually is similar to it's a, a suction cup mount that actually goes onto the the uh, surface that you're going to be mounting it. So basically, you put it onto this surface. You know, I don't know if you can see here where you'll just push this down, it'll actually suction onto the actual uh, surface. So you can put it on a flat surface. The other option, you could put Jump it sideways. Here. Right, so this is the handle that he's referring to. I don't know if you can see where the handle tightens down and locks it in place. Yeah, so you know the, the nice thing about this, you know, I'd say pros and cons if we started going back through the list. Uh, this has to be fixed onto a dash or you know a, a windscreen. Um, you couldn't mount it like this. You could, you know, there'd be really no purpose to mount it like this, other than securing it from going vertically. Uh, the benefit to this is, again, you could put it onto the windscreen. You could put it overhead, and the reason for that is you'll see when this mount gets uh, put back in here. Let me get it pulled up here. Well, you actually have a, a little ball and socket here, so you're able to loosen this up or tighten it, and you're able to move it around to different angles. If you can see that. So, you know, again, a, a really good option to be able to mount it both vertically, horizontally, overhead. Uh, you know, I'll kind of show you the functionality really quick to put the phone in. So I've got a larger iPhone Plus, and as you push that into the actual area, it's a little bit tight. Again, you can see that that's going to hold the phone really firm. So it's a really good part. It's a newer vendor that we're working with we're really excited about. Um, and this is the Rock Mini with suction cup, right? Is this product? Correct. Okay. That's correct from ScanStrut. Cool. So, you know, moving on, one of the other ones that we have here that we sold on the website for a while uh, is this uh, Sea Sucker 
uh, ram mounts. So the, the, the most people are probably familiar with the sea sucker suction cups. Um, and then you've got this adjustable like tension, uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, like an, an articulated arm. Yeah. arm. yeah. And then you have this, what's called the X mount from Ram, where you, you know, this is a spring where you tension open these, uh, you here, and you're able to set your phone into place. And just like that, it holds. Now on the back, there is a rubber uh, material that can be used to come over and hook the top and bottom of your phone. Just to give you some extra security. To give you some extra security. And I will do that here. I'm almost done, last one. And so you can see again, you've got a real strong positive hold on this. And similar to the last one, you're able to adjust it so that you, know, you can mount it you know, overhead. You know, say you were mounted like this to a hard top. You can mount it to your dash, you know, coming out of your dash this way. Or if it was mounting maybe to the top of the dash, you know, it could be folded over like this. Um, and that other unit is is much the same way. They have really have the same functionality. So the difference between the two, if we're comparing kind of pros and cons, what would we say? We would say that um, you know aesthetically, it's personal preference, right? There's yep. not really. I an think obvious, they look very similar. Yeah, they both look sharp. They mount similarly, right? They use suction to hold the the mount either you know in any location that you have. The footprint is quite a bit bigger with the sea sucker. Absolutely. Um, the sea sucker is a lot larger, and you can see right here than the, uh, the Rock Mini. Uh, so that would probably be a, an advantage for I the think Rock. ease of getting the phone in and out of the device, right? I mean, this, this seems more secure. In some senses, we did some you know, shake tests here before the video, um, but I think both would hold even in some of the rougher seas, but it is, you can see, more difficult to get the phone in and out of this one. Certainly, if you're going to do the rubber you know, extra security there. I would agree that this, you know, if you're trying to take this in and out regularly, this one would probably be easier because it's just a you know, squeeze to close, push to release, and then there's a ratcheting if you want to try to tighten it down really hard on this. For the most part, you're going like this, putting it in, yep. tightening it down. Yep, absolutely. So these are the three removable phone holders that we sell on the website. Um, and one of the things that you know we can get into this one here, it looks like there's a little bit of buttons on the side. You know, as, as we go through and design, even on ours, looking at an ability to be able to, to charge while you've got it in the holder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the purpose we talked about advantages of having the phone on the boat. A lot of guys are running their Navionics apps on there. Sure. Um, so you know, you're looking at the weather, you know, communication. People are playing music. You're Bluetoothing to a, a fusion radio that's installed on the boat. So the, the advantage of having your boat and having it readily accessible, that needs to be considered as you're you know, leaving it in that phone holder for majority of the day that you're able to access all of the different, the screen, the charging base, running an app like a Maps app. It's up all day and the screen's on and you're out in the elements so you've got your brightness up. You wanna be able to, you can, or so you can get a charger in there as well. Yeah, charging is definitely a major consideration. So none of these that we're showing right here have built-in charging really in any capacity. They do all provide access to the charger. Yep. So if you had a uh, USB charger on the boat, you'd be able to access them, but none of these inherently have built-in chargers like some of the ones that will look. You know, you hit on something that I thought was an, an important uh, thing to mention. You know, with this, uh, with this part, the part that we build that's acrylic, you know, one negative that has to be acknowledged is you do have this bungee running across the front of your screen. Sure. Which, you know, if you are using the phone regularly while on the water, say for your navigation or, or for anything else, you can be a little bit annoying. Whereas both of these, you have the face completely open. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one other thing that we noticed in testing, you know, kind of before and in, in preparation for this, was that this X mount does have a tendency to want to hit right on the uh, like home screen or yep. or whatever. It, in fact, it it's almost a side button. You actually almost hit the SOS. Yeah, I almost FBI I show almost up. called the police right before <laughs> the go live thing. Um, and, and and to be fair, we found you can kind of shift it down and, and miss that, but you want to be cognizant of that. That was a thing that we almost did here. Um, Cool. So let's move on to some of the more standard fixed, uh, mounts. fixed mount versions. Perfect. Yeah. So um, you know, I'll go. I'll go first, and this is actually uh, very similar to the one we covered earlier with the suction cup mount. Uh, kind of same base for this rock, but they actually provide a mount that you can screw into the fiberglass of the boat. 
Uh, so, you know, same way it clips back on there once you get that installed. And it has all of the same functionality of the one with the fiber, or pardon me, with the suction cup. So same ball and socket joint where you can see you can articulate it to different uh, angles, however you want to mount it. And then similar, right, it, it collapses in. You've got a ratcheting thing on the back of it to be able to tighten it up as much as possible. And then again, easy one hand uh, loosening to be able to pull the phone out. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the one with a suction cup and one that you permanently amount to the boat. And we've got a similar one that you want to go ahead and talk about here, Andrew, yeah. for uh, our so, model. So before we move on to this, I do, I realize that we didn't talk about pricing. You know, that's yeah. one thing I do want to go back to. Uh, so the, the Ram mount version, you know, is in the $80 range, you know, whatever, just under a hundred bucks or so. Yep. And then the rock with the suction cup is like 94, $95. Yeah, yeah, 94, 99, I think. Uh, you know, so a little bit more expensive, but uh, both in that just sub hundred dollar range the the one that we just showed which is the exact same as this one you know the rock with the uh, permanent fixed mount uh, is about uh, I guess it's about 10 bucks or so less than the other I think it's 83.99 right. so it gives you right. an idea of relative price you know I don't know that I that there's enough of a price difference between really any of these three adjustables to, to make it so that you would buy one based off of price you know, sure. they're all within 10 15 dollars of each other you know this model that we build you know, I should say this one with the suction cups is considerably half um, price it's half about the half the price, price. yep it, it's considerably less flexible though of course it, it absolutely is it only goes on the dash right right you have the bungee in, in front of it it's sleek looking but it is definitely less flexible than these but it is half the price. And a question while you've got that back up, I know we're kind of bouncing around a little bit. Mm -hmm. It does, this does as well, you know, all three of the ones that aren't permanently affixed handle a larger phone as well as the normal size they do. iPhone or, or Samsung Android that's out there. So going back to the idea of ones that are permanently affixed, right? You have this version that we build out of acrylic that has these suction cups on the back. Mm -hmm. And this is a version with studs. So the nice thing about it is you have no visible screws, right? Where you do here, you've got a couple screws, four screws. Here, it's all studs. So we supply a drill template that you mount on your dash and you drill these holes and then we supply nuts that you tighten down from the back. Um, and this is obviously a permanent mount at this point. You've mounted it to your dash, uh, but it's, it is a pretty you know, sleek, uh, you know, good looking uh, way to do it, but it is permanently mounted. And something like this, um, gosh, I, I think it's probably about the same price. I don't know that it adds much. Right around $50 40, probably. 45, 50 yeah. bucks. Um, so then we get into the really cool parts uh, which is where you start integrating uh, charging into it. Right, absolutely. Yeah, so um, you know, we'll, we'll probably start with uh, this one if you want to take sure. that. I know it's kind of back to yeah. back. But it's kind of the, it's kind of the same deal, right? We've just, at this point, we've extended the lower section, right? We'll kind of hold them side by side. We've extended the lower section so that now we have uh, an integrated uh, USB charger. And you can see on the back, you know, it's coming through here. And the one nice thing that we provide with these models is we provide a wiring harness that's ready to be you're tied into your existing electrical system, right? So we've got uh, it's got a fuse terminal got here, a fuse terminal and everything ready to be to be wired up. So this is available both with in this case you can see it, it is face mounting with screws, but we also have a stud mounted derivative of this with the um, you know, with the charger just like the one we just looked at. Awesome. Yeah, so this is actually a really cool part that just uh, we just got in. It's just brand new to the market. It's really um, cool. You know, they they did a lot of research on this part, and we're really excited about it. So similar, you're going to mount this permanently, and you can see actually if you slide this open, you can see the mounting holes are actually in here. So they provide oh, a template. Yeah. They provide a template for you to go through and mount this to the dash of the boat. And we'll go over and show you some of the application photos here in a moment. Um, what's really nice about this is the way that you actually get the phone into it. So I'm going to demonstrate that as you push this down, it expands both on the top and the bottom. So you can see it it centers the phone perfectly so that, you know, the, the main thing is this is an inductive charger, right? Yeah, we skipped so, over that, right? Right. It's, it's a, a wireless charging. You, know, you drop your phone in, it perfectly centers that. Um, again, a part that we're, we're really excited about. You know, they tested it to you know, a higher G rating. It's gonna hold on to the phone when you're on the boat. Um, IP6 waterproof, IPX6 waterproof rating, which means you, know, you can soak it down with the hose. You don't have to worry about it. It's gonna, it's gonna last in the elements. 
um, again, a really cool part that we're, we're pretty excited about here moving forward. So, so with inductive charging, uh, not to go too far off the rails, but this is just interesting information. Um, with inductive charging, we've done some inductive charging integrated into these kind of units on dashes for boat builders. And with inductive charging, one of the major challenges is that you really need the back of the center, back of your phone, to be lined up perfectly with that puck. You know, with the the I guess it's generally Qi is the the brand name of the, the charger. So right. you know, with the, the the back of your phone really needs to be centered on that uh, you know on that puck, and that becomes uniquely challenging with something like this, where you have this fixed bottom but you have variable height phones, right? I mean, here's two different phones, two different model iPhones, right? Where this one might be centered and charging, and this one, it might not hit where it At needs to At two inches hit. versus three inches, right? Yeah, so that's what's really, really cool about this is that it's self-centering, right? I have it upside down, but it opens equally on the, the top and bottom so that the center point of your phone is always hitting right here, and if you have a wireless charging phone, which all new modern... Uh, I think the, iPhone 8 Plus. I, I iPhone 8, 8 Plus, um, from there on, mm -hmm. all have that inductive charging in it. And of course, it does need to be tied into the you know the electrical system of your boat so that it yep. works. But it's really sweet. Um, and let me switch back here actually to uh, the website, and I'll show you some some videos. So this is the part right here, and here it is installed in the dash. Uh, like Jared mentioned, it's a one hand operation. So you can see this guy's just setting the phone back in place uh, with one hand. And then down here, let's actually replay this video. So here you can see how it works. It also has a charging indicator on it. You saw that at the very beginning. The light actually will turn on to green if it's charging and, and red when it's not. So you're drilling these four holes, you're running your wiring through, four screws, and you're in business. So we're jazzed up about this part. Like you said, it's a new part. It's probably the reason why we elected this to be the, the Facebook Live uh, topic. And all of these uh, other parts have, have their place as well. Let's talk about pricing on this. So the pricing right now is 150 bucks. So yep. quite a bit more expensive than this, right? I mean, you've got, you got an option here that's 45 bucks that doesn't charge, that can only be used on the dash. Yep. You know, you're paying three times that, but you've got the, you know, unit charging. You've got one hand operation. You have full access to your screen. Sure. Um, you know, I can that's a big thing. All buttons are fully accessible at that point because it's it's capturing the phone from the top and the bottom. Again, it's charging itself while it's in there. Right. You have access to the side. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the button. Right. So you know, you're you're unlocking a lot of phones either with facial recognition or fingerprint ID. You know, depending on the phone, if it's an iPhone, you know, you're pushing that that bottom button, or if you have a newer one, facial recognition. Everything's wide open. Um, so you can still see it. <clears throat> cool. So those are the main fold, uh, phone holders that we have on the website. We did want to talk about a few other things. The first is the fact that uh, you know, in some cases, you know, we, storage isn't the problem. It's just the fact that you want to be able to charge it. And I, I did want to quickly circle back around to the idea of, you know, the the phones do so much more now on the boat, like like run the navigation, which you're right. uh, you know, talking about. Uh, we've seen some that can connect to different depth finders. Yep. You know, and, and I think with as more and more of the connected boat, smart boat you know, comes, people realize that, that maybe they don't have to invest quite as much in electronics. Their phone can do a lot of it. But with that comes battery drain. Right? Absolutely. You know, like, like we were saying before, you know, hey, when you put on your navigation because you're driving here from Orlando to Miami, you get down to Miami and you go, what happened? I'm at 32%. Right. right? You know, and that'll happen on a day on the water too if you're using it for all these different apps and Absolutely. running music on it. You know, so having a charger uh, on the boat is increasingly important. So yeah. you want to show them those? So, there? you know, we saw this embedded in our actual uh, phone holder earlier. It's just basically a dual port USB charger. Um, you know, you've got your standard uh, wire connectors, positive and negative, here in the back. Um, again, the, the nice thing about this is that when not in use, it does come with this sealable cover so that you're not getting any spray or anything in there so you can protect that terminal. Uh, so it's waterproof when in. not in use. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So a uh, newer one that we've just recently added to the catalog from Scanstrut, uh, that advantage is there. Not only you know, do you have the two USB chargers you can see up in the bottom here, but the nice thing is is when you actually plug in a USB cord, I think we have one here, <clears throat> they've made it in such a way 
that once the cord actually goes into the phone, let's see here. Get your direction right. Here we go. So there's actually a seal that runs all the way around this entire thing. And then they've made little you know, chamfers into the, the, the seal here to where you can close this. So once it's in, you know, if this is mounted down lower on your console and you're taking on a lot of different spray on the boat, you know, you're still able to secure your phone and have that in the charger and not, you know, not be affected by any spray or water while you're running the boat. So this is a, a pretty cool product. And maybe we can flip back to the website and kind of, you know, comparatively shop between the two, right? Yeah, With so that extra feature, I think there is a difference in price. So the price of the standard, uh, let's switch back. Do, do, do. All right, I'm blocking it. So we have the standard dual USB with the, the you know, flip down cover is $22 without the wiring. You can sure. buy that same wiring harness from us for an additional, you know, whatever, 20, 25 bucks. Sure. Um, then the model that Jared showed. I think it may see. be on the next page. Looks like there's one page here to look up the price. Waterproof USB charger. <clears throat> We're having to shop our own website. Here we go. <laughs> Thirty-nine bucks. So what do we say the other one was? Twenty. Twenty-two. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're fifteen dollars extra again. So double, but still you're talking about small, uh, you know, expense, you know, relative, uh, you know, certainly for a boat, right? Sure. Um, cool. So then the last thing we wanted to show is for the guy who says, "Hey, I'm not so concerned about." like using my boat when I'm on the water yeah. and uh, as much as I am just having a place to store it and toss it. Uh, and this is a glove box. You want to talk about yeah, that? If you want to flip back yeah, real quick it. here. Um, so this is a helm box organizer. It's new from a, a vendor that we do quite a bit of a business with here in Orlando. Um, you know, this basically allows you to open up the top of the console and that's really where it's designed to go. And you drop this in and you can see that, you know, once you open it up, See if I can't get it open here. Once you open it up, <clears throat> it's got an integrated seal all the way around, so it's essentially waterproof, water resistant. It's pretty waterproof. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, being designed that way, where the entire door lays over, I would call it waterproof. Yeah. So you're cutting a footprint open on the top of your console here to allow for this cut out of the box. And again, you drop it in, you can see the mounting holes across here. And the nice thing is, is they've integrated some EVA foam into the bottom of it, similar to like a C deck, um, and then. You know, here they've also got one of the chargers, the dual USB charging ports. Same thing, right? So, you know, really good. You think about the top of your console where you're usually throwing stuff and laying it anyways. You know, now you can flip the top of this box open, throw in your glasses, your keys, your wallet. Everything's waterproof, held right there. Um, you know, again, we thought of it from a phone holder standpoint because that's a good spot for it. Your phone would go in there. It has a charger built in, so a really cool product to help store on top of your dash. Cool. Awesome. Well, let's see. We've got a couple of questions. Let's see. We, will the holder and inductor charging work with all phones in all cases? So that's a really good point that we haven't talked about that you need to think about. So no, inductor charging does not work on all phones. Like we said, it works on the later model uh, iPhones. And then I don't know enough about um, the other models. We'll see if we can link that up on the product page of the website. Well, one see. of the really cool things that we're, we're working on as well, uh, Scanstrut does offer another product that we'll be adding here shortly um, that basically allows you to plug a patch that goes into your normal charging port. That's and cool. so as a part of that, you put that patch underneath your case on the back of the phone, which now allows any phone that doesn't necessarily have inductive charging, it, in, it charges through that patch that goes into the actual charging port. So that's, pretty you know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, there is a way that gives you that capability. I don't know that it's, it's compatible for all phones, you know, but that's, that's actually really cool because my phone, I, I have the latest iPhone, but I like to use the like wallet case, right? So I keep a couple credit cards in the back, you know, in the side case of my phone and I was super jazzed up when I bought the new iPhone to start using the inductive charging, even if it was just on my nightstand, right? You know, right. place tops. And I quickly found that I had too many cards. You know, I, had, I only keep three cards in the back of this, but too many cards that it didn't charge through the phone. Yeah. So that product would potentially even, I'd be able to put that, plug it in, run it behind my case, and put it right here so that I could be doing the inductive charging Correct. with this case. I don't know what the tolerance is on it. Yeah. Um, you know, very tight tolerance, just like we were saying earlier about why this is so neat that it, it automatically centers the phone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be pretty close to right on for it to actually work. It's a great question, though. A few other things to think about. If you have a pop socket, right, which are becoming increasingly popular, 
Some of these are not compatible. The bungee cord ones are. There's enough play that you can pull it out and play it with the bungee. The X mount, let's see, it looks like that one would work as well. So you're good there. Um, these units here, it's kind of going to depend on where we where we put it in, right? Looks like we're good here. On There's those. a little bit of play there. It looks like though. Right? Try to ratchet it. Try to ratchet it down. Let's see. We'll see if we can do that. How many people does it take to test the phone? <laughs> All right, so that's ratcheted down pretty tight. It's in there pretty good. Hope I don't break or this phone. <laughs> It's, it's in there pretty good. It's okay. in there pretty good. It's definitely less convenient. You know, it's something to think about. But I do know that it does not work with that latest, the Qi wireless one. Okay. Right? Let's because look of at the that. distance, it's going to hold it because off, Because right? this lip is not yet, yeah, not quite large enough to stay. You can see that at that point, I'm not able to get, you know, all the way to it. So that's something to think about. Uh, you know, I'd hate to, to, to spend the money on this. And if you are someone that uses the pop socket, it doesn't seem to work with uh, pop with sockets unit. are like bananas. They're not allowed on the boat. Is that right? Is that the say? <laughs> you have to tell uh, Mike McKean. Shout out to Mike. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, hey, uh, let's see. Do you make acrylic mounts for tables? We certainly could make an acrylic mount for tables. Um, you know, specifically like an acrylic mount uh, that hold your phone that would that would go onto the table is what I would assume. If so, yes, you know, we build just about anything that you can out of uh, flat plastic sheets, be it acrylic or starboard or PVC or or anything else. Yeah, so on a table, I mean, would it just be that, you know, that's on a boat or is it that they're wanting it? I mean, give us a little bit more information if you yeah, can. Yeah, and, and you know, post it down in the comments for sure. I, you know, I'd love to, to understand a little bit more about what you're trying to do and, and, and you know, figure out how we can do it together. Uh, but with that, I think we are for tablets. Oh, ta ta tablets. It would help if I read, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We do have some mounts for tablets. Um, we we didn't cover less. them today. We didn't cover them today. We'll probably make that a uh, another video. Um, there similar is, style, though. I mean, similar style to these rock chargers here. Yeah, let's switch um, back over and look at them real yeah, quick. Or rock phone holders. They actually... Uh, are, are made by scan strut as well and they accommodate you know your, your normal 7 to, to 12 inch tablets I believe there's one right there so same same deal here this is ratcheting that's the exact same thing just Correct. scaled up I haven't, I haven't seen this before so perfect for navigation it's a good looking part and 100 100 bucks and then so this is another part that's very similar to you know, this where it's got the adjustable arm and you can see what it has is just two sea suckers on either side right which that scares me a little bit I know we've sold that part and we've never heard you see it has good reviews we've never heard anything bad I just get a little bit nervous running with just a suction cup holding yep. my my tablet and here's another one that's the derivative with instead of the suction cup it's permanently mounted out there yep cool awesome well, with that, let us know if you have any questions down in the comments. We, we're still looking for cool ideas as far as new, uh, or as far as the next topics. You know, we definitely want to make sure that this is you know good stuff that helps you. Um, you know, check out some of our other videos. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any. Uh, and other than that, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.